What's going on, Rangers? This is Rick. Hey, listen, I'm going to just be straight up with you. On this episode, there's some dark history that happened in this place, and if you're the type of person that gets triggered easily or offended easily, I repeat, do not watch. Do not watch this video because you will most likely get offended. However, if you're intrigued by that sort of thing, please stick around and enjoy the episode. This house is evil. The story all starts with a young 13-year-old boy who goes by the name Alan Lucy, who went missing in Uniontown, Alabama in March of 1985. His adoptive parents, Philip and Margaret Lucy, reported he had run away to Florida to be with his friends. Things got progressively worse when their biological son, Jason, told anyone who would listen that he had seen his father in the kitchen punching Alan in the face with his fist, knocking him to the floor. Jason claimed he was ordered to go to his room and later saw his father, Philip, walking around outside covered in dirt and holding a shovel. Nobody believed Jason's story of what had happened until his brother's remains were found nine years later. And you have to think this happened in the 80s before internet and smartphones so word got around very slowly, if any, at all. As time passed, the house was damaged in a fire. Philip and Margaret Lucy sold their home to Kelly Kirby, a gentleman from Washington who spent his spare time restoring older homes. Despite the fire, the home was purchased in October of 1993, and a team of house inspectors came to assess its structure. Two inspectors checked out the house's foundation for termite damage and crawled underneath the front side porch. They started to dig underground, and it was at this moment they would witness the most tragic crime scene of their lives. The two men found a layer of red bricks with plastic garbage bags buried beneath them. Inside the bags were human remains wrapped in a blanket garnished with Disney characters and later proven to be bones of Alan Lucy. And I just want to show you the front of the house where Alan Lucy was buried. And I believe he was buried right here, right underneath the porch. Shortly after, the Perry County Police Department got word and over a dozen pieces of evidence were collected at the Lucy residence. Yet none of the evidence was more compelling than the last moments of Alan Lucy's life when he was to witness the mad and macabre he would ever see till that day, as his father would cut him open alive and continue to bury him. Now I ask you to come with me on today's exploration, and let's dig up the past and see what else we can find to advance this story. The name is Ranger Rick. My mission in this series is to go back to the past Dig it up, search for clues, and stay curious. In each episode, I tell stories of abandoned places and their history. So come with me, let's explore together, and see what we can find. What's up, Rangers? So, before we begin today's episode, I want to tell you that I just launched a new Patreon page. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash Ranger Rick TV. And by your pledge of $2 a month, you receive a simple thank you by me in the tier one package. For $5 a month in the tier two package, I'll feature your name in the ending credits in each video, plus a simple thank you as well. If you do not wish to pledge, that's okay. Thanks anyway. Now enjoy the show. Oh man, look at this place, getting getting through all these bushes is a pain, but look at that. That is amazing. Alright, so I just made it inside this house, and I must say, this house definitely gives me the heebie-jeebies just from walking in here. 
although it's very beautiful, as you can tell by the front entrance, I love that, but everything else looks so creepy. Especially like this room here with the uh, children's books that are left behind. Look at this. William Blake, Songs of Innocence. I don't even know why this is still here. I wonder if this is left behind by the previous owners or was this for like a photo shoot? I don't know, I think this is probably like, oh yeah, this is old. That even looks old from 19, wait. The last time somebody checked out this book was from 1994, but dates back to 1981, actually it dates back to 1970. That is old. That's how they checked the books out back then in the library. They put those little cards in there with the last date on them. Time for an adventure. Wow, you could just keep reading on and on and on. Baby Volcano. What is this stuff? Long Christmas dinner. Huh. And what are these books about? Look at that. The Girl in White Armor. Albert Bigelow Payne. As time passed, Alan's adoptive parents were arrested a week prior to their remains being discovered on an arson charge connected to the fire that damaged the house. Police believe they torched the house in order to claim $119,000 in insurance money, which was purchased a month prior. While his parents were in custody, police performed a thorough investigation of the property and questioned members of the family before charging Philip Lucy with his stepson's murder. During their first hearing, their son Jason testified against his father, who sat quietly staring intently at his son, who painted him as a murderer. The judge reduced Philip's bail from $150,000 to $100,000 and turned the case over to the Perry County Grand Jury. His wife was implicated in the murder, but not charged with a serious crime. Margaret was allowed to return to her home to care for her children, but as time passed, she would divorce her husband after Philip's arrest and would eventually die of cancer in December of 1998. I wish we had power here, but we don't. So I gotta make do with what I have with this light. But look at this, beautiful fireplace, every which way you look, that's for sure. Beautiful, beautiful windows, I love them. Now, we're on the right-hand side of the house, and this must be, this must be leading to the kitchen, I think. Because over here, we got a big old baker's rack on the side. Spider webs everywhere. Okay, yeah, this is definitely the kitchen. And the last time this looks like it's been updated is probably in the 80s, I want to say. Early 80s, that's what it looks like, probably early 80s. This is not granite, this is Flamica plastic stuff. And this is the pantry, not much going on here, just old jar of pickles, a brown jar of pickles. I love that crown molding up there. That's the smallest fan I think I've ever seen. That's like <laughs> maybe a foot long blade and that's it. I wonder if we have anything hiding in the cabinets. No, it doesn't look like it. Anything up here? No, I figured that. I figured all will be missing. That is a huge daddy long legs right there. Can y'all see that on camera? 
that is disgusting. I hate spiders. I'm not the biggest fan. Now let's see, now where does this lead off to? This looks like... Okay, yeah, this is yeah, this is leading into the backyard. Look, the thing's busted wide open. Somebody must have came here and probably wanted to sleep inside, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Probably would have been a beautiful backyard at one point if that little boy wasn't buried underneath the steps. I'm going to go show you all on that in just a minute, but yeah. Look at this. Look at this crown molding right here. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. thing I do like about this house is look at these windows. They're situated like right here as if this was a patio because I think that's what it was. It looks like an indoor patio, almost like a sunroom. If you could picture those windows, it looks like they're blocked off right now. Somebody probably put a board in front. But yeah, this must have been the sunroom leading to the backyard. But I like how there's windows right here. So if there's windows here, the sunlight comes through and shoots light through these windows right here. I love that. All right, so making our way back back to the front, but we before we go ahead and go upstairs, I want to explore the right side of this place just to make sure I am not missing anything worth of interest. Let's see. Nothing here, but I do love this kind of tile work. Very nice, very nice. That's like a vinyl floor. That's not, wait, is that real? I can't tell. Actually, it kind of looks like vinyl. Still looks cool though. These are definitely all wooden floors. This is not fake wood. This is not engineered wood. That's real wood, I can tell. Well, let's see what else this house has to offer. That's a sign. You see when the blades go like that, for those of you that don't know, that is a sign of too much moisture and humidity in the air. We are in the south right now in, in Alabama. And that's what kind of happens to houses. They just kind of sit here and deteriorate. It looks like, if I had to take a guess, somebody has been sleeping inside of here. And it's a beautiful fireplace. I love these old southern style Victorian fireplaces. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that woodwork, good lord. All right, I'm back at the front of the house again for a reason, because I really want y'all to follow me along to where we were in the house. So we came in, this is the front door. We came in, we looked at the main entryway, and we went that way, we wrapped around, and we ended somewhere in that room behind the stairwell. The only room I did not check out yet was this room right here. As big as this house is, it's kind of small. I think. I think it's all an illusion. It is a bigger house because they do have really large rooms inside, but yeah, kind of small for what it is. Beautiful rooms though. I love these windows, beautiful windows, gorgeous fireplaces and everything. But as you can see, mother nature right over there has taken over and starting to see water come in through the roof, unfortunately. I love these French doors. This is a great, love it. All right, looking at the front door, and this is one of the first things I see. I see a couple of wasp nests, but I love, love, love how nature starts to take over. When humans leave stuff behind, nature just reclaims its territory. That's exactly what those leaves are doing right there. Can y'all see that? Let me lower it a little bit. There we go. Well, look at this. Beautiful. You don't see this kind of stuff that often. And what is this thing? Can somebody leave it in the comments? Like, what is this? Oh, wait. Looks like a little chain. Oh, and you just put it right here. Okay, so we figured it out. I didn't know what that was. Was it a doorbell or what? But no, that's a chain lock. All right, so now at least we know. For the next five years of the trial for Philip Lucy, he spent most of his time in different mental hospitals to determine if he was fit to stay on trial while tending to his so-called mental illness. In firing his attorney on multiple occasions, 
and changing his story many times to prolong his case as much as possible. Philip is quoted saying, I'm not a mad dog. If anybody's going to have angel wings one day, it's going to be me. He also added that his son Jason made up the entire story because he had been forced by the Alabama Bureau of Investigations who wanted to get me. Of course, Philip claimed innocence throughout the trial, insisting that Jason's story was fake because both of them were in Florida when Alan disappeared. He also claimed that in his defense that the skeletal remains didn't belong to Alan, even though authorities had proven they were. It was also shown that Philip had a history of violence, having been dishonorably discharged from the army for beating another soldier in the Korean War. In 1997, this is when Philip Lucy was found guilty of the murder of his adoptive son, Alan. The verdict appealed, and then in 2001, the second verdict also found him guilty. This is when Philip hung himself with his bedsheets in his jail cell. Born Alan Marvel to Willard D. Marvel and Ardella Narragon in Lee County, Florida. Alan was taken from his home by Florida's Child Services at the age of seven after his parents divorced. His biological parents were never told he was missing until his bones were found in 1994. She and her husband, Robert Leisure, attended every day of the second trial. After Alan's stepfather killed himself, residents of Perry County donated funds to give Allen a proper burial. The Perry County District Attorney, the County Assistant District Attorney, the former Perry County Police Chief, and Alabama's lead investigator were all in attendance at Allen's funeral. And finally, after 17 long years after his death, Allen Lucy was finally put to rest at Rosemont Cemetery in Uniontown, Alabama. Alrighty, I think it is time to head upstairs and let's make sure nobody is upstairs because I have not explored this place just yet. I'm just kind of winging it. Let me see if there needs anybody up there first. Hello, anybody up there? Just taking pictures. I don't know, I just have some bad experiences sometimes like... Sometimes I just have bad experiences going upstairs inside of an abandoned house. You really never know what you're going to find or who you're going to come across. So that's why I always shout. All right. So I just made it upstairs and this is one of the first things that you see. That is the stairwell right when you come up. And as you're looking across, that's one of the things you see. And this is absolutely one of the most well-lit staircases I have ever seen in my life. But look at this. Got a nice chandelier going right there. Got a, not a lot of natural light come in every which way you look. This house is absolutely unmatched. If you can use your imagination and look beyond the vandalism of Mother Nature, then you can see how beautiful this house would have been. But yeah, Mother Nature, of course, took its toll on this place. Just like many other places she's taken, but it's one of the consequences. You know, you leave a house here, that's what happens. Another cool thing I like about this house is I always wanted a house with a porch that's outside on the second or third floor. Look at this. I'm not going to go out there because of obvious reasons. It looks way too dangerous and it's just given in. Let's see if I can open the door and show you. Oh no, it's stuck. Let me see. Hold on. It should get it. Yep. Look at that. Beautiful porch. It looks like it would have been a beautiful backyard, too. I'm not going to go step on that, though. That would be stupid. <laughs> i go fall right through. Look at the pillars outside, or the columns. Look at that. Isn't that cool to see that? But they're definitely falling off the house, so... There's that. And let me get you a good shot 
of the front yard. So that's kind of what it looks like. It doesn't look like much. You could tell they just letting this house go to nothing. But yeah, the front yard is in shambles. And of course, no mansion would be complete without a bathroom that is upstairs. And this one is not disappointing. Oh, I just ran into a spider web. A pretty massive one, too. All right, in this room, I'm hearing wasp nest fly. Like, I'm hearing like a, a big wasp nest, like a bee's nest that's outside. It's probably coming from that window right there. Just getting y'all a good shot of this room. Because this is the first and probably last time we're going to see this place in a long time. I don't think I'm going to come back here. It's a little bit too sketch, if you get what I'm saying. This is the lovely yellow room of death. <laughs> Man, look at this. This is a kind of a sad looking room honestly that's the feeling that i'm getting from this it looks like a bright and cheery room but not to be mistaken i don't know about this room kind of just give you the gives you the feels when you're walking in you know what i mean but i do love that that is cool to see that lovely looking window straight ahead leading to the backyard. I'm getting, oh shit. I'm getting excited because look at that. You get to see the wraparound porch. Beautiful. That's one of the reasons why I think this house has lasted so long. Look at that roof. That is a tin roof. And it's not rusted or anything. It looks in very good shape. It's not made out of wood or any shingles. That's why you don't see many water stains in this house it does have them but not as many as you would think because if this place had a regular roof on it this place would be absolutely garbage by now mildew everywhere but it's not one place that i didn't check yet is these cabinets and an urban explorer likes like myself likes to stay curious but of course i figured why not check these? I knew there would be nothing behind, but you never know. It looks like this house is emptied out big time. They don't have anything left behind. Wow, this is probably the most brightest bedroom I have ever seen in my life. I feel sorry for the person that actually slept in this room. <laughs> and look at all the nails on the floor. Why is there so many nails? What is going on? absolutely in love with these windows but i think the sunlight coming in through here is a little bit too much and i want to say it's about five o'clock in the evening and that's what the sun is doing so pretty dang bright outside that is a little bit too bright it's very hot in this room too very hot very hot yeah as you can see mother nature dripping in right there what the hell did i find right what is this Oh, this is like a secret passage or something. Oh, no, never mind. No secret passages here. Just just the attic. But what is that? That looks like a little crawl space that goes down to somewhere, but I can't make it out. I hate to go down there, because if you go down there, you might fall through the ceiling. And I just want to show you the front of the house where Alan Lucy was buried. And I believe he was buried right here right underneath the porch. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks like there's some remnants of bones. You see those bricks right there? That's where he buried them. Right under there. there. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit further. I don't know if you can make that out, but that does look like bones to me. And so after doing a little bit more research, I found out that this house was built in 1918 and is part of the Uniontown Historic District. But the next thing I've read is a little perplexing. 
The house is currently owned by Elmendorf Air Force Base in Alaska and co-owned by the Raytheon Cobra Dane Project. So why would an Air Force Base all the way in Alaska want anything to do with a house in a small town in Alabama? That beats me, but you have to admit it only adds to the strangeness surrounding the property. But one thing is for sure, the residents of Uniontown will never forget the horrible events that went on inside this house.